Tonight, police in Ashanti region interrogate two top NDC officials in connection with Monday shooting at NDC regional office. So I briefed them and he asked one of the investigators to write down my statement and I did just that. We'll bring the details. We'll be live at the police headquarters there in the Shanti region as family of killed party loyalists expresses fear over death threats from unknown individuals. This is Top Story with Evans Mensah. And Top Story is always brought to you by Born Your Success Our Passion. Also brought to you by Gasm Cement, the nation builder. Vodafone, the future is exciting, ready, and nationwide health insurance. Our healthcare family, fire, police in Ashanti region have tonight been questioning top NDC officials in connection with Monday shooting at the party's regional office. John is learning that heavily armed police officers picked up former MCE for a Jusu Jabin, a free fight Yama Ponko, from his home uh, to the regional headquarters. They also searched his property. We're also learning tonight that former Deputy Sports Minister Joseph Yamin is also currently being interrogated by the regional police commander and a team of investigators. One person was killed and another severely injured. In yesterday's fatal shooting, police say was carried out by some members of pro-NDC vigilante group The Hawks. Well, uh, Afrifa Yama Ponko has been speaking to John News shortly after he was released uh, moments ago. What happened yesterday is an unfortunate situation. And uh, some of us have been traumatized. And uh, even in spite of that, a whole lot of things are going on. People are conjecturing other things. I was home today around 9 o'clock in the morning that I saw two blows of policemen. They came to my house and told me that uh, the regional commander wanted to you know, have a church with me. And before them, they would like to search. They would like to conduct search in my house. And I asked them, about set warrant. Later on, I thought it wise to allow them because I don't have anything to hide. And of course, they started the whole thing. They searched. You know, I have my, my home is full train. They sent the first and the second one. They, they didn't see even a mosquito over there. And they told me that the regional commander wanted to see me. And I told them that, okay, they should take the lead. Uh, I will come. I just want to put one or two things together before I come. And they insisted they have to come with me. So I just got ready and followed them to the regional commander. In fact, when I came here, it was more of a, of a friendly, you know, kind of thing. And the uh, commander asked me my side of the story. I told him, I briefed them, the commander and his management team, including the investigators and all that. So I briefed them and he asked one of the investigators to write down my statement. And I did just that. And after that, they asked me to wait a little bit. That time, too, I heard them talk about, uh, you know, my big brother, Honorable Joseph Yemi, that they, another group of policemen have gone to his house. Then I told them that, no, I, I don't think um, that is correct, because I've just spoken to Yemi. And maybe he's not aware that you people are looking out for him. And lo and behold, we called him and we got him. And I told him that this is what the police are saying. So he should come. I'm waiting for him here. And one more boy, you just arrived, as we can see him there. And I want to take you live now to the Ashanti Regional Capital, Kumasi, where my colleague, uh, Chrissy Deborah, has been following this and is on standby for us. Chrissy, we are learning more about the circumstances surrounding the uh, invitation to Yamaha Ponko. Yes, um, I spoke with the uh, sources at the regional command, and what they told me is that they were going after their assailants, and on the way they were too, they had intelligence that 
Yamapongkwa is having guns and ammunition in his residence. So they went in there to find out whether that is true. So they went, they told him that you're going to search. And they truly they searched, but they couldn't find anything. But so what they did was to invite him to come to the police headquarters so that he can write a statement. So when he came, he wrote only an ordinary statement, not a caution statement. And so that's, that's why he was arrested. I, I see, uh, and, and we understand, and he's confirmed as well, that a, a heavily armed police contingent had, had been at his home. Yes, so what we, initially when we asked the housekeeper, he told us they were numbered about 15, that we having two patrol vehicles and also about 15 armed men. Um, some were told were in Mofti, that they suspected they were BNI or CID. So those are the ones. So they were about 15 who came to the house. And we asked him whether it was arrest, and he said, of course, it's, it's, they were only invited him for questioning, but with the way things were, and having blowing sirens and everything, they, he thought it was a real arrest. It was in that style, and he thinks it, it, can't, it can't just be questioned. It's, it's real arrest, not questioning. What do we know about uh, the former deputy sports minister, uh, Mr. Yamin, who we understand is currently still being interrogated at the police headquarters where you are? Yes, um, we've been speaking with Yamapo when he tells us he's officially he is a spokesperson for Yamin. And throughout the campaign, when he was contesting for the Ashanti regional position, he campaigned for him. He was de facto the, 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 the PRO. So uh, they were standing there when the whole issue happened. So then it's important that when they invited him, they invite him also for questioning. So now I've seen him coming out of the regional commander's office. He's entered another room. We, I'm trying to get in touch with him, but he's, as I said, he's entered another room. So I'm trying, I'll try and get in touch so that we can um, speak on the matter. So that is why he was invited. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Chris Debra. Uh, thankfully, we can now speak to the regional secretary of the NDC, uh, Mr. Kwame Zhu. Mr. Zhu, thank you for your time here on News Night. Uh, we know that two of your uh, top officials have now been invited. One is currently still being interrogated. I'm just wondering whether um, there are further invitations to some more of your members. Uh, so far, our attention has been drawn to the two invitations. And as we indicated yesterday, that the party would not interfere with the work of the police, we will lend our full letter of support to the Ghana police service to establish the identities of these men who have undertaken these heinous crimes and apprehend them and possibly prosecute them in full compliance with the laws of our country. We do not intend under any circumstance whatsoever to support, mass up, or follow any party member, be him a quick or a small fish, to the, the, the regional police command. All party persons who are deemed useful to the investigation and accordingly invited by the police who have to go there on their own. In the heat of uh, the incident yesterday, we spoke to you, of course, and this was coming to you as, you know, you spoke to us. Uh, we've had a whole 24 hours. I wonder if uh, there's some additional information that brings some further clarity to what happened yesterday that has come to the attention of the regional executives. Uh, whatever clarity that we have had so far can better be used by the Ghana Police Service to conclude the investigations. Like I indicated, we do not intend in what or in deed to, as it were, interfere with the works of the Ghana Police Service. Let us stand far and observe them undertake their constitutionally mandated duty. And I, and I need to ask you this because it's been making rounds on social media. There's a, this a tape that's supposed to be, allegedly is your voice in which somebody's had talking to you, uh, allegedly uh, talking about the circumstances of the incident. And, and it's alleged that uh, there is a setting sense of who was maybe or the group of people who may be involved. Has this come to your attention? Let's tweet that very audio recording. I have listened. Let's tweet it with the contempt it deserves. I have listened thoroughly to the recording. Those are not my voice, and that can certainly not be my views on the subject. I am scandalized. I do not know what the motive is. Let us not dignify the voice in circulation. Uh, we've been speaking to the family of the deceased. Um, I'm sure the party knows this family and have reached out to the family? Precisely so. Yesterday in the evening, the entire regional executive committee visited the bereaved family, and we commiserated with them. And uh, we, they were gutted. Yes, as we are devastated. So we were in the family home for about 20 minutes. We had fruitful discussions with them, for which today we designated our Zongo Course coordinator to go to the Konvanoche Teaching Hospital 
to possibly retrieve the body for internment. But I think we have failed because the police are still continuing their investigations. And like we indicated, we do not intend to interfere with the investigative process. So tomorrow we'll continue to request for the body. And if that is released, together with the family, we shall intend the body. Uh, because we're getting some additional information from the family. I wanted to listen to the sister of the, of the, of the deceased who's been speaking to us uh, because it may interest the party what she, he's been saying. Nana Yaojima, my colleague, visited the family house and came through with this report. In the family's quest to seek justice, the deceased sister, whose name we are withholding, posted pictures of suspected killers on Facebook. She had called for public support to enable police find killers. A user named Jinya Wall Leader reacted with the following words. All of you here commenting. Then he used the S word. Yes, he is a warrior. That's why he survived after he completed his mission. You better delete this post. If not, Virginia May War Leader followed with a call to the young woman and further issued verbal threats. Here, a spokesperson for the family who says such information will be made available to police. At about 2 p.m., somebody who identified himself as Junior Me War Leader from supposedly Kronum Afantro called and threatened me with death for posting his picture on Facebook. The caller allegedly questioned the wisdom in putting that picture on Facebook. And and if Wasil was a killer, meaning a strong man, he wouldn't have lost the fight. A man said to be a constituency executive for the NDC in Asawase interrupted and restrained bereaved relatives from speaking to the news team. Some of the family members will not take it kindly. Habiba, who had spoken earlier on Insha FM Reviews, the brother had before yesterday received threats occasionally, allegedly from party people. One Baba Idrisu is one of the people who had threatened Wasil. He actually told Wasil's mom the family wouldn't hear from Wasil again before what happened yesterday. I called my mom when I heard the man was warning Wasil to be careful or he would get him arrested, to which Wasil responded he couldn't do anything to him. He pulled out handcuffs, though he is not a policeman. Habiba talks about moments before her brother left for the party office to meet the tragedy. Wasi was about to eat in the morning yesterday in the house when he had a call, inviting him to the party office for settlement with leaders there. My mom warned him not to go and fight, but Wasi told her it was just for settlement. He would not engage anyone in a fight. I don't know the kind of settlement. Just about an hour later, we had a call that Wasi had been shot dead by some people on a motorbike. Wasiu, described by relatives as a strong man, left behind a wife and a son. His mother and sisters depended on him for survival. Meanwhile, a second person who suffered gunshot wounds and was rushed to Konfanochi Teaching Hospital is said to be responding to treatments. Nana Ojima reporting. Uh, I still have with me on the telephone line, Ms. Azu. Ms. Azu, this second individual who was shot, I know yesterday the party visited him in the hospital. Do you have an update on how he's faring? I think he's responding steadily to treatment. But let me respond quickly to the interview by the family. The party sympathizes extremely with the family. We are equally bereaved. And nobody, no human life, no Ghanaian life, must be lost under the circumstances that happened yesterday at the original party offices. So we sympathize profusely with the bereaved family. However, the gentleman who has been hurt and has been appended to so far is responding to treatment, and we intend to visit him tomorrow again and check on him at the hospital. The, the family talks about receiving death threats. I wonder if that has come to attention, apparently from somebody known to the, to the, to the NDC in the region. We, we have advised that all threats of the sort are reported to the Ghana Police Services. Unfortunately, we lack the expertise to be able to deal with issues of this nature. So everybody who is threatened to report accordingly to the regional police command, they are better placed to investigate all threats and apprehend the perpetrators of such or those behind the threats. 
that will be in the interest of the investigative process. So I would urge the family members to report accordingly to the Ghana Police Service. Just out of curiosity, yesterday we heard from the party and you said, and in fact you repeated it here, that you are cooperating fully with the police. I'm just wondering, seeing some of these individuals we hear are known to the party, is the party providing names uh, uh, to the police, locations of when these people could be found, people who could be material uh, or persons of interest to this investigation? Even before we arrived yesterday at the regional police command, they had issued a statement and they have made public the names of persons their preliminary investigations had revealed who would be allegedly responsible for the act. So we believe in their competence and would want to keep it that way. Okay. Uh, the, 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 We've we heard today from the the governing new patriotic party did a press conference to react to what happened yesterday. Uh, this is the uh, party's communications director, uh, Yaba Miyasama, speaking at the press conference a short while ago. On Monday, 18 February 2019, we again here that the leadership of the MDC had to take to their needs for dear life in the midst of armed violence, resulting in at least one reported death. In other instances, the so called hawks. A group apparently dedicated to political violence allegedly formed in the wake of the former president's campaign of unity wars, and a so called NDC task force are cited. This brazen impunity is not surprising, considering that the former president's boot for boot statement appears to have appeared here. Yeah. The MPP condemns the violence without reservation. We are also, as a matter of urgency, asking the police to expedite action in bringing the perpetrators to book. Mr. Azul, fair comment? Uh, Mr. Bobby, as someone must know, there is a reason why his party has appointed him as a director of communications. A lot more is expected of him. He should not be doubling in uh, very unprofessional speculations. I, I find his comments very unwanted. We are all expecting the police to undertake the investigations. These speculations and exaggerations do not in any way help the police service to undertake at all investigation. He is seeking to interfere with the investigative process. All he's seeking to do is to divert attention and coerce the police subtly towards a particular angle. I, and I find it very disheartening, particularly when he is a director of communications for a sitting government. I, I, I find it very despicable. And I think it's about time to desist from such as. Let us all be united once a while behind an issue of national character of this nature. This is a murder case. It, crime has no color. It is not partisan. I find, I find his comments very unfortunate and regrettable. And I want to believe that this will be one of those moments that you have a sober reflection and recognize that he has heard. I, I know you talk about uh, speculation, but in the police statement yesterday, they were they introduced the element of these groups being pro NDC, the Hawks. If you read the statement that was made by the police yesterday, they said preliminary investigations, and even when they were mentioning individual names, they indicated allegedly. So even the Ghana Police Service itself is erring on the side of caution, much less the public. So the expectation is that political actors would also throw a lane that is consistent with the principles we seek to espouse. Why would you make a comment that seeks to interfere with an investigative process that is ongoing, particularly when the police have not conducted and finalized their investigations? They would have said in the statement clearly that this is the final, you know, final uh, conclusion of our investigations, but they indicated preliminary investigation. Why would he be in a hurry to twat? the processes and the efforts of the Ghana Police Service and divert the attention in a particular uh, uh, direction. All this goes to buttress the fact that there is a sustained effort by government to divert attention from the sitting of the short commission of inquiry that is presently unraveling circumstances that occurred at the Iowa West Wogombai elections that every Tom Dick and Harry in Ghana is condemning. I, I find it very appalling. And this does not reflect a government that professes to be at all times committed to maintenance of law and order.
That is the NDC uh, Regional Secretary in Ashanti Region, uh, Mr. Kwame Azud. I want to join us with your thoughts. Feel free to do so. But the uh, government has expressed condolences to the family of the man who lost his life after a shooting incident at the NDC's uh, Regional Headquarters on Monday. And the, in the statement signed by the Information Minister Kojo Ponkruma, government has condemned the incident, urging the police to speed up investigations into the matter. My colleague Elton Broby has a copy of that and is in the studio with details. Elton, what else is government saying? So the government is expressing condolences to the bereaved family and wishes the injured a speedy recovery and urge the police to speed up investigation to bring the perpetrators to the government reiterates that violence should be eschewed from all uh, fears of our national life citizens and groups are further encouraged to resist from actions that create a state of insecurity in our nation uh, that's a government statement on the incident yesterday we can now speak to uh, the west african network for peace building the national coordinator albert uh, yellen joins us on the telephone line right now albert i'm grateful for your time here on top story uh, but, but what, what we saw yesterday uh, another chapter in what is turning out to be a pretty uh, dark period in our in our political history what's one of own reading of the security implications of what we've seen yesterday Thank you, Evans, and uh, good evening to your listeners. And uh, first of all, let me say that uh, we express our heartfelt uh, condolences to the brief family and uh, all those who were affected by the incident yesterday. <coughs> um, first of all, let me say that um, one Earth as an institution uh, is deeply worried about the development, uh, which we think has been consistent, uh, a sustained one, and which is creating some a kind of um, worry for everyone in this country. And you can observe from the commentary and uh, demeanor from some of the commentary that everyone is worried about these developments uh, because of the continuous, the recurrent nature of the incidences. And we think that we need to begin to, uh, uh, and it should have been long overdue, that we look at this as something that has national security implications for everyone that we need to tackle it from all fronts. And I think one of them could be the, the, the uh, what do you call the commission of inquiry by the uh, government at the moment uh, following the incident at uh, Ayawaso West Wagon. And I think yesterday's incident should follow suit. I understand that the, the police have uh, begun investigations into it. And we should look at it from the criminal point of view at the moment. That is very important then we can expand the discussion first of all trying to understand uh, to what extent are these groups um, in terms of their groupings uh, formation in terms of their operations and in terms of their motivations can we describe them as vigilante as it is popularly known within uh, the Ghanaian parlance um, and to what extent can we describe them as a militia group you know uh, their operations and how they are formed a motivation uh, as we understand, following from a lot of uh, data that is out there, they could be described as a militia group. Um, uh, if you look at them very often, the, the, we can see them roaming with arms, but they find them and use them whenever the need arises. And a vigilante group, as we understand, uh, I mean, does not go with this kind of characteristic. So I think that is a worrying situation, and we need to look at it to diagnose the issue properly. What, for instance, is their motivation? you know, for becoming members of such groups. And that is very key. One could be economic, uh, another one could be relevant, you know. So you look at it and say, it's like a clan patron relationship that is existing. So they find some benefit materially from it, and they probably also find some benefit from the kind of work that they do, um, engaging in some kind of hooliganism, militarism, you know. So we need to look at it, diagnose the issue properly, and then begin to see, okay, and there has been the discourse that we could um, look at a way of integrating them. Now, that could be one way, you know, uh, because these groups definitely have some capacity. And if we say they should move away, I mean, they should uh, come to disarm them. Now, what do they do with that capacity? 
that in itself is also another danger. So we need to find a way of really reintegrating these people into various other arrangements. So yeah, that, and, and that, 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 that suggestion came up at the, at the commission hearing today. Uh, yes. At least two of the, both the chair of the commission and Madame Harita Mesa Bones who suggested that. And, uh, and I think this is something that needs still to be, to be explored in greater depth and see how it works because it, uh, examples have been cited elsewhere. Uh, but there's also the counter argument about um, the risk of that the, yeah. uh, we could be we could prove counterproductive in asking it could encourage other people to form because they know they will be integrated exactly. i mean it's not it's not it's something that still needs a bit of fine-tuning to get it exactly. right exactly exactly and you are right evans i probably i didn't listen to the have so much in, involved in so many things this day today uh, but the, that is one of the things but it, it can be done cautiously for instance i think that with that capacity if they are even put within we say our security apparatus, you know, and with their understanding of the terrain in terms of national security, that could be dangerous because, first of all, these people have not gone through the discipline in terms of training as we have the, for the former security. Uh, in terms of moral and loyalty for the protection and ensuring the security of every individual, every citizen, they haven't probably gone through that. And then, of course, so if we are to do a re an integration of them, then it has to be done very, very cautiously. The other thing could be, um, for instance, do they have the capacity in terms of uh, reading and, and writing to, you know, to do the things that they could be doing? So it needs to be done cautiously. Uh, but the other thing is, if you say, okay, integrate them, then it's like motivation for people to come together and say, okay, then we can group so that they will be, uh, they will integrate us into, uh, you know, so that we find employment. So it's, it's, it's something that can be done cautiously, but I think that there definitely has to be a way out. For instance, as I indicated, there is the economics of it, and there is probably the, the, the exuberance and the kind of physical power people think they have. And they want to find relevance in doing some kind of things that they are doing. So caution is required uh, in, in, in terms of how we disband them. But the key thing also is that we need to attack these uh, uh, incidences frontally and make it, I mean, clear to every individual, every group, that if you engage in such acts that are unacceptable in law, then the law deals with you. You know, yeah. So, so you have to separate the criminality uh, and deal with it uh, with the criminal, you know, tools at our disposal, and then deal with those that can be integrated uh, separately. But I'm grateful that you joined us. That is uh, Albert there with the West Africa Network for Peace Building. Uh, you want to stay with us because on Newsnight, there's more on on this. We have the very latest from the Commission of Inquiry today as well.